One of the most devastating insect pests to invade New Zealand recently has been the tomato potato psyllid. Master's student Andrew Pugh is based at the Bioprotection Research Centre at Lincoln University and is studying the ladybird as a biocontrol agent for this destructive psyllid. Approximately two years ago, actually, as a summer scholarship student here, sort of as an aside, we undertook a project with three different ladybird species to see how they controlled the tomato potato psyllid just in a simple laboratory setting. And that sort of formed the basis for what is now my Master of Science project. The tomato potato psyllid just being sort of such a, a major pest and devastating not only, the, not only the potato industry but also tomatoes, capsicums, tamarillos. Uh, it just became a hot research topic and so we thought we'd have a go with our ideas. And so we just did quite simple trials looking at the veracity of the ladybirds, uh, how many psyllids they would eat in 24 hours but also their feeding behaviour. So we presented them with like tomato leaflets or potato leaflets with the psyllids on them and just how hairs on the leaves uh, affected their detection of the prey and that kind of thing. What made everyone sort of so interested was that the psyllid vectors a bacterium, uh, Liberobacter, that in potatoes causes zebra chip disease. Uh, this causes distinct sort of browning uh, within the tubers, particularly when fried which basically makes the, the potatoes unsellable when processed. All three ladybirds had never previously been associated uh, with this particular species. Um, this uh, is called new, new Association Biological Control. Uh, it is generally sort of found to be about 75% more successful uh, than what's called classical biocontrol. It's had three different sizes of ladybird and we went with the largest one, Clearborn Rallii, for future research just because it could eat up to 124 hours. Uh, so this particular ladybird, uh, often called the southern ladybird, originally was imported to New Zealand from Australia back in the 1970s, uh, actually to control eucalyptus tortoise beetle uh, and eucalyptus plantations here. Relative to other ladybirds um, that most people are familiar with, uh, it's much larger in size uh, and Aside from having some dots, it also has uh, what can be described as squiggly lines uh, on its back. The larvae themselves are a quite a valuable predator, particularly in the latter stages, they will eat 100 psyllids themselves in 24 hours. By them already being here and being established for quite some time, uh, we don't have to go through all the process of getting them uh, imported to New Zealand. Um, but also that the fact they haven't been recorded having non-target effects as yet uh, makes it seem unlikely that further releases will cause um, unintended consequences. My master's is made up of three main components. This glasshouse experiment here, which is looking at whether the ladybird can uh, reduce the psyllid densities on potato plants. The second part is dealing with what sort of prey preferences does the lady exhibit, if any. Um, particularly looking at whether it has a prey preference of the psyllid over other pests such as aphids, and also looking at how long the ladybird lives. Uh, we didn't really have any uh, hard data on that, uh, so we wanted to see whether it lived for you know, a whole growing season, part of the growing season, all that kind of thing. So far, what I've come across is in the prey choice, is that there is no prey preference when it's presented with um, psyllids and aphids. Um, but when it's presented with psyllids and whitefly, uh, which is sort of perhaps looking towards a more glasshouse application, uh, showed a real aversion for eating the whitefly, which it can be quite important because many glasshouse growers use parasitoids to control whitefly, and so predating on whitefly could actually interfere with that already established biological control practice. If they were using pesticides regularly, the ladybird just simply wouldn't be able to sort of establish uh, at least in any high numbers enough to have an effect. Um, so that's why we're focusing on the, the more organic side or the, those that don't like to use sprays as much. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.